Now when you cut your plywood for the bottom of your drawers, remember how deep you cut into these. Because if you just measure the, the same distance inside here, you've done nothing. So I've cut mine a quarter inch deep. That's what I wanted. It's uh, exactly one quarter of an inch. So I know that I'm gonna have to add a half inch to whatever the inside dimensions are. And I know that just measuring down here where I've already connected, we got 14 and 1 8. So I'm gonna need it 14 and 5 8 because I'm gonna add a half inch. 14 and 5 8 by This is 15 and a quarter, so it'll be 15 and three quarters. So now I usually cut this about probably 15 and five eighths instead of 15 and a quarter, about three quarters. That way I got myself a little, a little play in there. And then, so 15 and five eighths. So I've got my ply cut, it's just quarter inch plywood. You don't have to go crazy with the glue here, but. It does, I think it does need a little bit. It's easiest if you just lay it up on the edge and just stream a little down in the crack. When I rip my ply, I like to take, I got these little sanding blocks, they're gator sanding blocks. They're just like foam pads. Kind of hit the edges of these. Takes off any splintering that you may have gotten. If your blade was dull or if you, you just didn't have the right blade in or whatever. And then fly by, I mean, on its own, it just has a tendency to splinter because that stuff is so thin. So we'll measure, make sure it's 14 and 5 eighths. It is. And just slide it in there. It's not. Uh, Once you get it started, of course the top end is going to be loose because you don't have anything up there. So hold it. It's happening in place. Now I've messed up. And you may have caught it when I was measuring it, right? But I didn't allow for this to inset when I was when I measured the distance. So what I need is rip this uh, a little shorter here. It happens. It happens to everybody. If you make a mistake, don't get discouraged. At least uh, on this one, we've got uh, material we can cut off. You can't add to, right? That was my uh oh. It happens. Like I said, still got uh, a little bit of glue in there. Let's see if this works this time. And that's a pretty simple drawer to build. I got a little bit of under, under, overhang down there, which is great because that's how much is holding up my my ply. This is it's quarter inch. It's very durable for that span. That's not a large drawer. There is a little bit of flex there. If you wanted to step up and use a little thicker plywood, you could do that. But I just I don't think it's necessary for what this is uh, going to be. It's going to be a drawer for a desk at home. So then you can see the pocket holes and. Just to give you an idea, is we're gonna put a face on this, like this. Of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna route the edges a little bit, but that's basically what you're gonna have. So it'll, it's actually gonna hide those pocket holes. Okay, so I made a pretty good, uh-oh, because when it was upside down, I wasn't thinking when I flipped it the right side up that the drawers were gonna be on the left. The customer wanted the drawers on the right, the seating part on the left. So I basically just had to take it apart, took these um, pieces off the other side and brought them to this side. And then we'll go around the other side. Took these two pieces here and here from the other side and brought them to the front, which is now the front, it was the back. Uh, the only issue now that I have, I've got a little glue there that I might fill and sand those holes, which won't be that big of a deal, really. And then over here, uh, I got some ugly I got to cover up and fix. Which I think I can do that. 
Uh, we got some trim going on here anyway, and I think that's gonna cover most of it. So, with that being said, tomorrow, because it's getting late today, we're gonna put this trim on. I made this myself out of a, a one by four. I just cut a strip, as you can see, and then I put that detail on it. I wanna cut pieces to go on each side and down the front. I'm gonna glue and brad nail them to the front like that. I think that'll give us a nice detail. This is going to be painted, so uh, it'll look really nice. But, like I said earlier, everybody messes up, and I messed up big time on this one. Uh, just had my head somewhere else. But we got it fixed, so no big deal. Glad we got it before uh, <laughs> got all the drawers put in. Well, I had a heck of a day in the shop yesterday. Uh, wound up building this backwards, basically, so I had to flip everything around. It happens, I guess. I just wasn't paying attention. Uh, today, or in, I broke my I broke my microphone for my camera. Uh, I guess I stepped on it or, or pulled it in half or something, so it broke in half. So I got another one coming, so I apologize for the audio. And I broke my tripod. A uh, board fell, hit my tripod. It's just aluminum tripod and it's been in all the pieces. So, unproductive day, I you could say. So what I'm doing now is I've already cut my drawer front. These are 16 and uh, just, just shy of 16 and a half inches because our, our opening is 16 and 5 16 So these are 16 and 7 16 uh, So I've stacked them on top of each other and now I'm just going to measure the gap here. 11 16 gap. So I'm going to divide that 11 16 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then that way I'll have equal spacing. The best way to do that is playing cards. If you have some playing cards, you can just stack them in there until you get them just right. And then I can measure center and I'll know where I'm gonna put my drawer slides. So that's what I'm fixing to do. I saw this trick on YouTube myself and I don't know uh, who I saw it from or I would definitely give credit. Just common playing cards. Get them anywhere for a little bit of nothing. So what they did was they just, See how many you got there? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna take five there, five here, and just start stacking them until you get the correct gap all the way up. And you can do the same thing on the sides when you start, when I go to attach them. I like playing Jenga. Jenga, Jenga. After that major crash, I restacked all my drawer uh, faces. That's what those are. Those are one by sixes, uh, five and a half inches thick, uh, about 16 and a half inches long, a little shy of 16 and a half. Those are gonna be my face to my drawers. And I went ahead and marked center on each one of those and then drew lines. That's where my uh, drawer slides are gonna be mounted. So I've never used one of these before, but I picked this up on Amazon. It's the Craig drawer slide jig. I looked, saw some videos on it. I like something that could help me. I think it was 20 or $25. I'll drop a link down below. But we're gonna check it out and see if it works. I'll let you know. I read the directions and uh, they were simple to do. I used that uh, Craig face clamp and just clamped them to the side of the box just like that. and. Uh, it was really easy. Uh, made uh, putting those drawer slides in extremely easy. I've done it before without those drawer slide jigs and it was a lot more difficult. I would highly recommend these. I just want to interrupt the time lapse to show you that these, these um, Craig drawer jigs, drawer slide jigs, you flip them around and clamp them. If you have a face, a face frame, you can clamp them to that. This cabinet or this desk does not. It's going to be inset, but I was able to clamp to the back side. Uh, let me see if you can see it on camera. Yeah, so I was able to clamp from the back side to this face and get it that way. It just holds your drawer there. You can tag it in place. Then you can go ahead and slide all the way out and get your uh, other screws in there. But this just helps get everything set up. You can actually uh, see. 
just eyeballing that it's, it's really straight and flat. So after I get everything attached, we'll see how well it works. you never um, use any of these drawer slides like this, they're ball bearing slides, they glide extremely smooth. But what I was going to point out to you is when I mounted them, I used the slotted holes, uh, the first for two or, th or three screws there, in the slotted holes, uh, this, this piece attaches to your uh, frame. So use the slotted holes and I put them right in the middle, that way all I had to do is back it off just a little bit, I was able to shift it back an eighth inch and then tighten it back up and then once it's set i go in and put a screw in the in the uh the round holes and not the slotted but you can see there's slotted holes all down through there and then of course these pop out you just flip that little lever up or down whichever side you're on and this will slide off so that you can actually attach the, the slide completely to these now that uh, I got these where I want them, and these are set where I want them, these have slotted holes both ways, up and down and front to back. But as long as you're line, I drew a line on halfway of the box. You can put these anywhere on the box you want. I just, I done halfway because that's how I'm doing this one. I just, I got two screws in there, one up and down, one uh, in the circle, and I'll put another one back here in the circle. That'll set it. I have three screws on this box to be playing. And the first couple of drawers I've made, I was, uh, especially these ball bearings, once you, that lever, once you pull it out, it just lets it come out of the slide. What I want to point out though, is when you put them back in, it's going to feel like, you can hear it click, I don't know if you heard that. But right there, it's a hard stop. You actually have to put pressure on it to get it to go back where you want it. You don't want to slam it because you'll actually break the piece that's holding the ball bearings in and they'll go everywhere. But you mash it all the way to the back until it snaps back in place and then it'll glide in and out like it's supposed to. And these ball bearing slides usually have a positive a lock so that it doesn't it won't pop out. And then once we get all of our drawers on, I can go in and put my, my drawer slide in. take these slides out instead of trying to flip that Craig jig around. Craig jig is awesome for getting them in their uh, level like that. But as far as flipping them around without a face frame, it's a little more difficult in my opinion. So uh, this is what I'm doing. Just make sure you got the front here. Uh, if you can see this line I've marked on there, it's uh, two and a quarter because these are four and a half inches wide. I just marked center. So I'm just gonna take this, putting it right flush with the front of the box or the drawer. And then you can see that center line is just right in the middle of those holes. So you can see it there. So you can move it until it's perfectly centered. 
And that's how I'm putting my boxes in. What I like to do on these, now, I'm no expert, so this is only the second time I've ever done drawers. This is why it's taking me long, because I'm taking my time. But what I like to do on this is put these on the slotted up and downs, and these on the, on the, on the ones that mount to the case, uh, slotted forward and back. That way, if I need to do any adjusting, uh, I can adjust the drawer both ways without having to do a whole lot of uh, taking everything apart. Uh, on this middle one here, I just go ahead and set this in the, cir in the, in the circle. That way it's set. So it's not going to move, but that's how I do those. And then I'm just going to slide it back in place. This is the same way as the other boxes. You got to put a little pressure in there to get it to pop back in place. I like to slide it in and out a couple of times to make sure everything's going to actuate like it's supposed to. Is actuate a word? <laughs> but and then I'll take this and check it. Uh, this side's good. The right side I'm going to bring forward about a thirty-second of an inch, so I don't have that tied down yet. And I've got those slotted holes back there that I'm able to just loosen the, the screws off and push it forward just a little bit. And that should make everything just right. I'm gonna slide hole here and then slide hole here so I can adjust. And now that I've got them everything like I want, I'll just push this forward until I find one of those and I'll just set a screw. cut a piece of quarter inch ply. Same stuff I use on the bottom of the drawers. And I'm just gonna set it right here. I've already got it cut to size. And I'm just gonna tack this in. I went ahead and put another one by there just to have something to attach to the middle. So it would be flopping. But that'll, that'll kind of clean that look up in the back. I know people usually don't see the back of it, but it just, it, to me, it just kind of finishes up and this stuff's inexpensive. Oh,